So, welcome everybody. Uh, today I would like to talk about our journey in setting up a group Linux client at VW with all the pain points that we have had and also the good parts of it. And it shouldn't be a classical talk because I would like also to start a discussion uh, about how the developers or the distributions can improve their distribution so that it would be a better replacement for the company usage, at least in the Microsoft-dominated world. So um, let's start with the integration problems and solution. And in case you're wondering why this Tux has the different color scheme, that's uh, the company colors for our department. So that's the logo for our client. Uh, but before I start, um, who the hell is talking? Um, I'm uh, Jan Brummer. I'm a long time contributor to open source software. I'm maintainer of GNOME Web, of Roger Router, and several other very important software parts on the Linux stack. I'm a contributor to GTK, GLib, GNOME, and wherever, and of course, a happy husband and a lucky father. And on the business side, I'm working for VW. And I'm responsible for the group Linux client. And I'm also in a lucky position that I have the permission to work as an official open source contributor in the name of Volkswagen. So everything that we are developing uh, is something that we try to bring it back to upstream. That's a very important task for me. So let's talk with the background. Why? Do we have a Linux client here because our software department, the carrier, uh, was in need of a Linux client? Uh, the typical reasons are that uh, embedded software solution or development isn't no longer possible without a Linux client. Uh, every hardware that is uh, capable for AI mostly supports Linux only. So that's a good reason to switch our systems from Windows to Linux. And, of course, there is an easy solution that you grab a server or something and put it as an unmanaged system to your, uh, to your lab, but then you, of course, of course no, have no access to the corporate network with all the, all the benefits or downsides in this case, maybe. <laughs> uh, so developers need a managed client. And the question here in the top uh, front was, uh, are we using OpenSUSE for this part? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Uh, it's in Ubuntu 20.04 with some modification. And the question here was, why is that? Uh, because uh, the hardware that we need from NVIDIA is uh, claiming they only support some selected distribution, and OpenSUSE is not part of it. So in case you are interested in having OpenSUSE at VW, then please talk to NVIDIA and convince them that uh, SUSE is also capable of handling the AI stack from NVIDIA. It would be a nice idea, at least for me. So, um, and of course, it unfortunately has to fit in a Microsoft-dominated infrastructure because everything has been set up for years ago with a typical AD, and uh, so we have all the common pain points. And the question for me, uh, for all of you, is do you know the common issues that we are facing in such a world with the Linux client? Have you ever supported a company which has supported or had to support a Microsoft infrastructure? Anyone? Name a few. Name a few. Okay, you are Patrick. All right. Yeah, that should be better, I guess, for the rest of us. But it was an integration with LDAP, if I get it right. So uh, LDAP is a really easy part uh, in case you have the correct fields <laughs> set. Uh, 
Yeah, so um, my company was doing uh, integration with Allied Irish Bank with 7,500 Linux desktops um, for the actual bank tellers uh, and the environment was, um, it was originally uh, SUSE um, and they wanted to migrate to, to Ubuntu and we had a, they had a, an interesting deployment system that we kept on going and they were, they were using a Novell LDAP um, that's kind of it. All right. Um, so in the past, I already also had had some contacts with different companies, uh, all in the areas of Wolfsburg and Brunswick. And for us, a common issue uh, was um, Dom knows this for better than anyone else is the proxy configuration issue that we have on Linux because there is no central configuration for the proxy uh, settings, so every application has to be configured manually or in case you are lucky that you are using some uh, established uh, stacks like glib or Qt, then everything is done in the backend, uh, but uh, it's unfortunately not the case. Another common issue that we are facing, um, where is it, is of course, our users of a smart card uh, that we are using for different tasks like signing documents, logging into our systems. And of course, the users want something, smart card, something that is also uh, capable to mimic the same behavior that we have on Windows or Mac, where you can log in with a smart card. But on the GNOME stack, you have the typical issue that you, of course, can log in with GDM, but unfortunately, the GNOME keyring is then not unlocked automatically, so you have to enter your password again, or you leave it empty, but that's, of course, not a good solution. Um, so common pain points that we have. Then the proprietary software that uh, is fighting with open source components because in uh, our use case, the proprietary software wasn't well tested for the different distribution. So that's another common point, and uh, of course, uh, Microsoft or compatible products like Office, and the typical workflows with larger Excel files, uh, and I'm aware of a colleagues that have uh, one Excel sheet which links to 50, uh, 40 different other Excel sheets, and in case something else breaks, then uh, you're out of luck. And you cannot do this with LibreOffice or whatever replacement you have in mind. Unfortunately not. So uh, let's take a deep dive into the proxy configuration. Uh, proxies for me are evil, at least on Linux, because we have no central backend. But luckily, there is a solution for it. That's uh, the proxy. And in the last year, starting with last year, I took over the maintenance shipment from uh, Dominic Leuenberger. Uh, in the name of VW, we have rewritten all the software to address the common issue that the open source community uh, had with the proxy and tried to integrate it. So it's the solution for the proxy configuration here. Is everyone aware what libproxy really does, or should I take this as additional step here? There's a microphone. Isn't there supposed to be also environment variables to set the uh, proxy config for all apps? No, uh, libproxy is capable of extracting your proxy configuration from the desktop that you are using, uh, let it be GNOME, KDE, whatever, uh, and also is capable of using sysconfig file that you are using in SUSE, or the environment, and then the application has the possibility to ask libproxy, uh, hey, in case I want to reach uh, address uh, SUSE.com, uh, should I have to use a proxy or not? And then luckily you will have a proxy as a return value, and can use it. So the good part is that there's upstream integration in glib networking, Qt, we get, uh, wget, and libneon, and so on. But there are also some uh, software components that are uh, refusing to integrate uh, our merge request at the moment. Uh, so we have different uh, downstream patches for apt, for curl, Python request, and Go. 
all of them have different reasons why they're saying they are not integrating libproxy to make the a world easier for the end users. APT is saying, uh, okay, it doesn't fit in the core stack that they have for the software because libproxy depends on glib, and glib is not part of the core stack, so they cannot use it. Their solution is to uh, add an external helper script, so every call that you're doing with apt starts an external application and is asking, hey, do I have to use a proxy here? And this is uh, really painful, but it's working. Curl, on the other hand, um, yeah, has a long story of not integrating the proxy. The last main reason is because they want to have an async API. Uh, but um, at least for me, it doesn't make sense because in case you don't have an answer whether to use a proxy or not, you cannot continue. So I don't know. Um, and Python requests this is, this is really simple. They are saying they are feature complete. Um, so there is no need for uh, integration of the proxy, so automatic configuration like uh, WPAD, it's not our problem. Uh, we are feature complete. And Go is saying something uh, like, uh, oh, it's written in C, nice, uh, but uh, in case you wanted to have it integrated in Go, you have to rewrite everything in Go. <laughs> so. Different reasons why uh, there is no, currently no integration for the core for those software stacks, uh, but luckily we have patched them for our client, and we are providing those patches uh, also at the proxy homepage. And, and if I correct, most of the pitch, patches are integrated in SUSE. I'm not sure. I'm looking at DOM right now. Should be maybe. Okay. And of course, as I said, the last point, uh, VW is currently doing the maintaining for it. Okay, then uh, switch over to smart card integrations. And there we have the problem, I just told it in this beginning, uh, we do not have an application that does document signing of PDF files. Of course, there has been Ocular in the KDE part, uh, but it's something not, that we don't want to integrate in our client because we are using GNOME as a desktop environment. So, we took the chance and added the necessary parts to the poplar and also patched events. Um, the merchant request is open for over a year now because events development has stalled somehow and there is no papers uh, in the queue, which will hopefully be part of uh, the next core, GNOME core, 47. Really? Yep. Right after papers happen, Evans got revived. Okay. But it will, can you repeat it? Uh, I guess we need another. All right, can you repeat it? He says uh, that Evans has been revived since uh, a paper has been started. So, uh, unfortunately, the Evans is no longer part of the GNOME core. So it still is. It, it's still part of core. Really? Yep. Okay, then I have some information that are not public yet. <laughs> But the goal is actually to uh, set papers in place because uh, Evans hasn't, still hasn't um, uh, done the step to GTK4. That's why it's, back. it's still back. They ported. Really? Mm -hmm. Good news. <laughs> so maybe I don't have a chance to add it to Evans, otherwise I have to uh, do the same patch to papers again. And we have added then uh, support for smart card support in GNOME Web. Um, that's also part of the latest release, 45. Uh, and uh, then the typical issues that we have in smart cards, do you need an application where you need to can change your pen and your book? And our solution was to uh, add it to Seahorse, but Seahorse is uh, yeah, out of scope at the moment. It's no longer part of the GNOME stack, so um, we will have to see. And so last but not least, the uh, GNOME Secrets have received smart card and YubiKey support, and the next run there will be also fingerprint authentication and quick unload support. Um, so most of the parts that we need at VW has been fixed, and hopefully they will be integrated at least for Evans and CROs. Uh, 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 merge requests are still open, uh, but will hopefully integrate it soon. 
All right, uh, 15 minutes left, so I will start with the Ritter private network. Um, we do have a long story of having uh, problems with the proprietary software um, because, um, if I can remember correctly, they have added support for Ubuntu 2004 in uh, yeah, last year. Uh, three years later than well, whatever. <laughs> and we also have the problem that we are looking into the future and saying uh, um, we need an immutable system at VW that's so that the update process is way easier for us and uh, we do not have the correct package format for it. So we need something else and what we have done now is we have added external browser support to OpenConnect and we have done some further improvements to the Global Protect protocol so that everything is in place for us and we can just use, make use of Open Connect. Very, very easy. Then the question regarding Microsoft products. Uh, this is uh, a topic for itself, uh, but uh, here are the highlights. Uh, we do have the company rule that the Edge is the standard browser in our corporate environment. In the past, we had to update some core uh, component to add support, proper SMIME and encryption, uh, encryption and signing support to Evolution. Uh, this in the end broke somehow Microsoft Edge, and then it's causing purely causing uh, crashes when using smart card. We had a long chat with Microsoft and the final solution was, and the official recommendation currently is, use another browser. <laughs> because they have currently too few requests regarding Linux, so it's not a high priority. It's that easy. And now we are looking into the Intuon for device management. Uh, we gave it a try, and unfortunately, this doesn't work because the internal web page where you're doing the uh, authentication is just a white screen at the moment. The typical issue that we are, we are facing with uh, WebKit and NVIDIA. The best compatibility uh, with smart cards and two-factor authentication uh, as a browser is uh, Chrome uh, from my point of view. In the last days, uh, my chief had problems with Firefox, when others had problems with Edge, and anyways, Chrome uh, is the best choice uh, as a browser at the moment uh, for two-factor authentication and uh, uh, smart cards from my point of view. Yeah, maybe in the future we can switch uh, to it because there are different issues. Uh, we are using Firefox, and that's an alternative. Uh, but Chrome is currently not allowed in a corporate environment. Uh, maybe it's possible to switch to something like Chromium, or don't know what we will see. Or maybe GNOME Web. Eh? Uh, so device management is currently not possible, and. Uh, so we are looking into using the MS Graph library to do the calls manually so our back-end management system can do the rest for us. It's that easy. And did someone mention the full Office Suite compatibility? Uh, that's another issue. Uh, I, I will leave out the typical parts uh, from Word, uh, PowerPoint, whatever, and just focus on uh, OneDrive this year, and so we have developed and integrated the OneDrive support in GNOME this year. It's part of the latest release. Everything is placed, so we have a new library, MS Graph, which does the main thing, and it's also the library that we will use for the Intune support, and uh, so we will extend it in the future. Um, so now let's move to something interesting, Showtime. And hopefully this is working. I'm not sure. Mm. So this is Evans. That's the hint for you. 
And where's Cursor? It's painful here. Currently, uh, digital signing sits here. And also, one of the reasons why this merge request hasn't been accepted yet is because the GNOME design teams want to discuss how it should be implemented in a way that we are not only supporting smart cards, but only the typical signature that you are scanning in or doing it to a touch interface, whatever. And it should be a common interface. And this is a long story where Jacob is working on. So um, the typical workflow is then uh, draw a rectangle. And oh, no smart card inserted. So let's do it again. At least the arrow handling is working. And select a signature. Where should it be safe? Uh, uh, whatever, typo. And that's it. Everything works out of the box, like it should be, and the same way as Adobe works. Oh, and I missed the point. There's also another merge request uh, available that's not uh, regarding signing, but for verification. That's also a patch we have integrated to our clients so that you have the possibility to see all the detailed information about the signed signatures. And this is a really bad UI, so this is something that needs to be changed in the future. Uh, but it's very working, and I'm, yeah. Actually, I'm trusted. That's good. And then the last thing I would like to show is the OneDrive integration. So it's now possible to use the GNOME Online accounts to set up your uh, accounts, and it have integrated at the moment two accounts, one of the personal, one of the business, one trying to use the personal. I'm not sure whether the network is working. Good. So you have the chance to all have access for all your shared files. And actually, the my colleague shared some files. So it's working totally fine, as you have expected. And by the way, try to use this image here. Keep that in mind. Always take care of your uh, end users of the product. Otherwise, it's, it's a good project, but a bad product. And I'll switch back to this one. So what's next? For us, at least, uh, we are trying to extend the support of the MS Graph library for the rest uh, of APIs that we are interested in. Let it be uh, calendars, context, whatever. And uh, Intune, as I said before. And we will work on a proper support for offline storage thing for the GNOME Middle file system. And this is not something that we will do for the OneDrive backend, but for every other backend as well. So it should be a generic solution so that you can do it with uh, Google Drive as well, or DAF, whatever. And what have you else? Uh, of course, we are trying to deliver a client that is pre-configured for everyone. So that the user just can enter the credential on the login screen and uh, the rest is set up uh, for himself. So we need some kind of option to send out pre-configured conversion files for GNOME Online accounts uh, so that he is able to use his mails and OneDrive out of the box. Well, uh, to sum it up, we are here to stay. We would like to continue our co uh, contribution in the open source part. Uh, but we need help uh, because we cannot do that alone. At the moment, I am alone. I'm, luckily, I have a student here. Where are you? There, Malte, who will join for a couple of months, and then you will have to see. Uh, so definitely, we need help. And maybe, in case you have some experience in this area, the VPN configuration dialogues are very, very ugly. <laughs> 
it's some kind of 90 design. Uh, could need some love, and of course some further smart cards improvement would be good. And the spelling isn't wrong, uh, yeah, right? So, but maybe the last part is something that we are working on the new James Bond uh, replacement for uh, Gnome Kiwi. And maybe this will be something, I'm not sure whether it will be part of Gnome 47. I don't know. So to close this talk, you always have the chance to join VW in all the areas that we have at Carriot, Audi, whatever. And you can do there some interesting software development for the car or also some fun like I'm doing at the moment. So let's end the talk with the typical Q&A session. Um, short question. This lib proxy, can you do also HTTPS? Yeah, sure. It's not uh, protocol aware, so whatever the configuration is returning, it will be uh, sending out. Okay, so no man in the middle attack possible. Okay, thanks. It depends on your application, of course. In case you are requesting HTTP support or some kind of old gopher support, <laughs> then it's your problem. I have actually two questions for you. The first of all, uh, the upcoming cooperation with Rivian, uh, do you see any impact on Cariat on that? I'm not talking about the business stuff here. Okay. Second question, um, what is your experience with feeding back your developments into uh, upstream, either the projects or the distribution? Uh, it's a mixed. For Suze, it's very easy because I'm now Dominic, uh, so that's really easy in case I'm trying to integrate the patches back to mainstream. Uh, we have seen a slide regarding the proxy. Some of the proxy are very, very happy that they have some contribution to improve their software, but unfortunately, there are the other ones that are saying, like, yeah, just rewrite everything and go, and it should be fine. It depends on the maintainer. It's a really problem for us actually to, to raise the awareness that there are uh, companies or private persons working with a different proxy support uh, that's not handled right now with the application and uh, are not understanding the problem. They're saying then just uh, use another man middle proxy that does the typical old uh, support regarding uh, environment variables. It really depends on the maintainer. But there is also a good blog post, I think, was it from Alan Day, regarding how to handle new contributors in the past months. Uh, you can take a look there, and every maintainer should re read it and should re react like those unwritten rules. Uh, how do you deliver the images to your users, and what rights do uh, your users have on them? Like, do they have full pseudo? What's the level of support and trust? Uh, in case you are talking regarding the operating system image, uh, then it's a system that installed internally at the moment, and then shipped to the users. Uh, what was the second part? What rights do the users have while they're running the As system? Pseudo rights. Uh, they do have pseudo rights. They can uh, request pseudo permissions uh, for one year, then they need to approve it from their managers, and then can do, uh, I would say, almost everything that they need, but there are some rules they have to follow because they are not allowed to uh, uh, edit system configuration files. Uh, otherwise, your client is no longer managed, and then you will have to reinstall the system. All right. All right. One question uh, from my side. How about distributing the VPN configuration uh, uh, with a salt puppet or anything else uh, that every user has got the company configuration and that you can reuse it? Uh, we are actually using the puppet for the... 
but in future it will be replaced with something else. How are you dealing with all the open merge requests that you've been speaking about? Are you using either OBS, Launchpad, or something to build your own packages to then install on the base distro? Or do you actually need to wait for you know, the communities to accept them and get them into a released distro before you're allowed to deploy them? Um, it depends. Uh, I always try to push the patches back to mainstream and the typical GitLab, GitHub repositories. And in case I need to package it myself, then currently it's a mixed thing of doing it locally or on, on to, or internal GitHub, uh, where the package will be built automatically. But the goal is to switch to Ubuntu 20 of 24 this year, uh, where most of the parts are already in place with the distribution. All right. Thank you.